And we are live. How's everyone doing tonight? Um, I am Christopher Balzano, uh, and this is Tripping on Legends live broadcast. I'm kind of just rolling with it right now um, while I wait for, <clears throat> see whether people are going to be uh, stopping in tonight. Um, and, you know, quite frankly, if they don't stop in, then we're just going to keep rolling with this anyway, because he seemed to be um, getting a lot of airplay on uh, the HipCast account. So they are being pushed out uh, through iTunes and through all those other things. I decided to go with the no hat tonight uh, and show the mop top um, because people are like, do you have hair? And I'm like, I've taken a lot of, you know, uh, pride in growing my hair over the last couple of years. So uh, anyone who knows me knows I used to shave it straight down, but now I am uh, with a full head of hair and I have to get a cut like <laughs> every few weeks, it seems. Um, so I'm just going to wait for a little bit. Once again, I'm drinking my Robert the Doll uh, coffee. And actually, Robert the Doll has uh, something to do with what we're going to talk about tonight in some weird way. Um, there's a connection between – there is Natalie. Um, there's a connection between um, something very weird that happened to me today and Robert the Doll in a way. Um so I'm going to wait maybe just about another minute or so. Um, maybe just kind of give people a little bit of a recap. I'm actually going to right now uh, pop in to, um, to Tripping on Legends because I want to post something for you guys um, that I don't know if people can see me. I don't even know if, if it's like that. Natalie, if it's like that and I switch over tabs, do people still see me? Let me know. Um, because I wanted to post in our comments um, something about – where is it? What's up in Ormond Beach, I believe, is the episode. Um, I wanted to post an episode that's connected to some of the things we're going to talk about tonight. Um, that way, in case people are at all interested uh, in finding out a little bit more of the context of these legends, I'm going to – talk about um they can there's our theme music uh which means the link here is live um so uh i'm gonna start off uh by talking about something very weird that happened today right so um i had my um my my state testing and you know i'm walking around the room walking around the room and i come across this old book which is the Encyclopedia of Haunted Places by Jeff Belanger. Um, and this is actually the first book that I was published in. So it's kind of a cool little thing. And quite frankly, by being the ignorant or arrogant person that I am, I've really only read uh, the sections that have to do with me that I wrote <laughs> and the New England ones. I, it's funny because coming down here to Florida, I didn't even read the Florida ones. Uh, Ormond Beach is actually uh, in that section and some stories that I hadn't heard. So. Um, those are ones we're going to have to tackle. Uh, Natalie and I are going to have to tackle eventually as we work on uh, some of the stuff we're working on for Ormond Beach. Um, so I started to read through it, and I've been taking notes because I've been working on stories, and I'm finding very similar motifs. So I think I showed these uh, last week, but I've been working on note cards um, because I want to get these ideas down, and then I can kind of shuffle them in between locations, but then also between um, – uh, motifs or similar stories that come because we're focusing on the legend parts of the hauntings and not just necessarily I'm all disheveled with the shirt here. Um, here we go. <clears throat> That's a little better. Um, we're work working on the legend part of it. So we're really going into the backstory more than what's currently happening or what people have reported. Um, so I am doing note cards. So I take this book out <clears throat> and I've done the New England section. I've read the New England section before. And so I flip to the mid-Atlantic section. And I'm looking at these stories from the Mid-Atlantic, and I read maybe two, uh, two or three, and I'm like, mm, yeah, I have four. Okay, that's not really going to fit into what we're working on. Because what I'm looking for is I'm looking for uh, old stories that are in here. And this book is 12 years old, um, 13 years old, and so I'm looking for stories that might have a love connection to it because, you know, we're thinking about this whole 
um, uh, haunted love, hashtag haunted love idea. And so I'm looking for stories that I might be able to follow up on, whether I'm talking to, whether I go out and I talk to the people who investigate or I just look into it more. And I'm like, you know what? Like, I'm not going to really take the notes on these things because a lot of these are, are, are hauntings that people have written about 12 years ago. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write them in my idea book. So rather than take notes on, I'm going to write them in the idea book. I'm going to organize them that way. And so I get out my idea book, which is, I know I've got Batman here and Spider-Man here. I should have worn my Spider-Man shirt, but it's dirty. Um, and so I'm looking at it, and I open it up initially to the page. I'm flipping through, blah, 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 blah. And then I flip to the front. And on the front, I see this sticky note. Can you see that? All right. So the idea is, <laughs> so, now Natalie, I didn't remember this. I actually took a picture of it. I snapped a picture of it. I'm like, is this even my handwriting? Which I still don't think it is. I think it's the person who gave it to us. Um, and I'm like, what the heck is this? Right? Afterwards, I asked Natalie, what is this? Is it my handwriting? Is it not? And it's not my handwriting. Natalie says it was given to us uh, when we went to Key West. So I went to Key West. You can kind of watch, listen to the Key West episode. It's actually one of our, our best episodes. We went into, we were able to get into Robert the Doll's old house. And we were one of the first people in a long time to, to go into the house and go up into the attic, which was pretty cool. So here's where Robert the Doll comes in. <clears throat> and the guy was from New York. And so he tells us this story. He says, oh, you guys got to check this thing out right here. So this is Lake Ronkonkoma. 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 Anyone who knows about this, please feel free to correct my pronunciation of it. Anyone who knows me knows I'm, I'm horrible when it comes to pronunciation. But Lake Ronkonoka. Ron, Ron, Ronkonkoma. And I look down. I'm not even kidding you. I look down. This is the page that I'm on where I decide to flip over. And I am. That's the page that I'm literally on here. Crazy, right? It's a crazy, like, totally coincidence. Now, Natalie and I have this, throughout this whole Tripping on Legends and Vengeance, but we said go with the signs, right? So I'm going to read for you really quickly. Um that it is located in the township of Islip. Uh, it's home of the largest lake on Long Island. So we already kind of were looking at Long Island because we had thought about potentially um, looking into the whole, um, the whole uh, uh, Stranger Things uh, project thing, whatever it's called, it's, it's slipping me right now. Um, does anyone know? Natalie, you're always good with this. You need to comment so I know. Um, but it talks about, uh, it's, 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 haunted by the spirit of an Indian princess, which I've kind of been knee deep in the last couple of weeks. In one version of the princess story, usually referred to as the troubled spirit of the lake, the Indian maiden is sacrificed to appease a god, Minotoa. In order to save her people from the rising waters, she ties herself down with stones. These are all details I want you guys to remember. There's gonna be a test on this. Rows out to the middle of the lake and slips over the edge into the water. Her lover dives in after her, unable to bear, leaving her alone in the infinite waters. Another legend connected to the lake is that it is bottomless, which it is not. Um, it's known as what a, a kettle hole lake. It is formed by the isolated piece of glaciers about 20,000 years ago when the ice melted, blah, blah, blah. Another version of this legend, often called the Lady of the Lake. Now, if you've been following us, you know the whole, well, I don't have that book. It's over here somewhere. Um, I have an old copy of a book called Lady of the Lake, which uh, has to do with in haunted objects, this whole story having to do with Ocala. So there's another connection, Lady of the Lake, all the stuff. Um, it tells of the princess and her love for an English settler. So now it's an English settler. Um, I also want you to, to note that it does not specifically say what tribe the woman belongs to. Um, tells of the love of a princess, their love is forbidden, and she was set to marry another. One night, she attempts to swim across the lake to her waiting lover, but she drowned halfway across. The legend goes on to say 
that the princess returns to the lake once a year to look for her companion to join her in her watery tomb. Lonely and heartbroken, she has become like the siren of Greek myth, luring men to their deaths. Local claim that there's at least one drowning per year in the lake, and most of the victims are male. Uh, newspaper and police reports do seem to support the legend's claims in this area. You know what? Uh, this is actually, so Natalie, once again, remind, this is actually what we planned on following up on anyway. So I think we got this mixed up with the Motov or whatever it's called, uh, ones that are the inspiration for, um, for Strange Things. But this is the one that we were actually um, looking to go trip this summer. Um, because it's got that connection to it. So this is actually before we started looking into all these weird, crazy love things. Um, so that's the story. Okay. So one of the, but keep in mind, I had, this guy had told me about this six months ago. Um, and um, I've got a comment, but I can't read the comment. That's crazy. Um, was it, well, let me read. No, um, we had, we had planned on doing this. Um, and he had written me that note and I opened the book literally up to that page and I'm reading it as I'm looking for love stories. Crazy. So that's kind of like that part of it. Now, the weird thing is I want you to remember some of the themes that were in that. I'm now putting this book down so you can see my absolutely messy house as I put my head down. Um, we had talked about an episode. So right now I'm putting the link to episode. <clears throat> All right, there we go. Um, I put in a link to the episode where we talk about the weird stuff that's in Ormond Beach because it's connected thematically to this stuff I'm going to talk about today. Um, there is this place in Silver Springs. I'm gathering there's a state forest, Silver Springs State Forest, but then there's also um, Silver Springs um, is the name of the, the spring itself, um, and it's also the name of the town. So very Silver Springish things going on there. Um, and we found these really insane legends from Silver Springs. Um, this comes from, I'm sorry, that I should have cited the person from there. I'll put the, the name in the comments, the person who wrote that article. This is from the Legend of Silver Springs, and this is um, from floridagenweb.org. Um, one of the things, there we go, finally the comment came up. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that was interesting is this. Don't go to Silver Springs if you are in love or go to Silver Springs if you want to be in love. So there's, for some reason, love and Silver Springs. Now, what I haven't researched yet, which is probably what I'm going to do as soon as I stop this video, is, is the Fleetwood Mac song about Silver Springs, Florida? Because it has to do with love, has to do with this yearning, has to do with all this stuff we're going to talk about. Um, if you are in love, according to this one, so this is <clears throat> this is um, uh, from, like I said, Florida, FloridaGenWeb.org. Uh, these are places in Marion, stories in, in Marion, which this is not it. Um, the first story says that DeSoto, so the conqueror DeSoto, was like after he had kind of what he did feel like cleared the land, he went there um, with his wife and his wife was leading the procession and it says she led this procession of elephants um and so they went out into the um into the the, the water thinking that it was shallow and it wasn't and all of the elephants uh that his wife and her like little group were in all sunk and died nothing has ever been able to be confirmed there nor have i ever been able to confirm the fact that they find iron or ivory and tusks in silver springs but the story goes that he died there this other one <clears throat> excuse me um okalawa uh, was the son of the mighty king olaski olaski doesn't sound really native american uh, while winona was the only child of a no less powerful chief sonawa suwani now suwani uh, is not mentioned as a chief. And I did like a quick search and I wasn't able to find a Suwani chief. So once again, I want us to note that the girl's tribe is not mentioned. Um, one day while hunting, uh, Okalawa came upon Winona uh, and she gathered, as she gathered her herbs in the forest and they fell dearly in love. The affection was returned and they spent many happy hours together in the dim, great dim forest. They didn't want to tell anyone. Okay. But they planned to escape to the tribe of the Chattahoochee, 
whom they hoped would grant them shelter. Now, the Chattahoochee, once again, I'm assuming, has got to be uh, in Tennessee, except for the Hochi part is a, a Calusa word, right? It's a Calusa word part, um, meaning river. So I'm not quite sure how that all fits in. Um, I'm going to shut my phone off here. Um, so they plan to run away together. Um, uh, okay, they were uh, joined in the shadow of an of a, of a oak. Okay, so they specifically had a tree that they would go under and fall in love uh, and, and kiss and stuff like that. Um, they waited there under this oak that they used to meet at until uh, it was nighttime. Uh, suddenly a shot rang out in the still of the night, and still night of the Air Force was instantly in the air resounded with hideous, with hideous cries, knowing their flight was discovered. They made a desperate fat dash for freedom. Back and forth, they doubled, successfully eluding their pursuers until at length they found themselves on a high bluff overlooking a glistening stream. Silver Springs. As they stood there for an instant, the moon emerged from the dense clouds from which they had been veiled, bathed in the silvery moonlight. This is very romantic. The two motionless figures were clearly outlined against the sky. A yell of triumph that they were discovered and their pursuers broke from the edge of the forest. Uh, Okawana seized Winona in his arms and they leapt to their death. The union of Silver Spring and the Ukala River unifies the union of the lovers in death. And it is said that the green waving moss that grows in streams is the lost Winona's hair. So in other words, Silver Springs joins this river. The river is named for the guy who committed suicide. They were being pursued and then that happened. <clears throat> um, and then here's the second one I found. So this is a, these are the first ones. Um, a young brave Navarro of the tribe of Tacusta. Uh, was deeply enamored with a young maiden from a neighboring tribe of the Makoski. Uh, Makuska, Makoki, once again, notice that the women's is not fully described, right? Um, because the council would talk long and wisely to Navarro, uh, but she was, oh, it does say here, it says her name is Tahula, was beyond a beautiful maiden. It was unforgiven that the tribes should mix but he remained unshaken in his determination. So they loved each other hardcore. Um, Centurina discovered that since a fair means had failed, he would try foul. So he was the, um, like the wisest person in the tribe, the oldest wisest person in the tribe. Um, he sent him on a journey to the land of creeks, which I still haven't been able to find out what that means. Uh, they dwelt to the north and basically end, it says, er, er, er. Uh, to bring news of their strength and numbers. So basically they were trying to be like, hey, just so you know, um, we are strong and we have numbers and we want to join with you. Um, Navarro was told that if he was, uh, um, that he would be allowed to marry any woman that he wanted in the tribe. So this was supposed to offer him inspiration, it was supposed to um, unify these two tribes um, this land of creeks and then the other one and then it was also supposed to he was supposed to get the woman of his, of his, that he wanted right the idea of this was that once he got his choice of whatever woman from his tribe he could get um, he would he would forget about uh, Tohula because you know the women were so much more beautiful in his tribe maybe okay um, but what they didn't know is that the ancient or the old uh, man had sent a runner ahead of him uh, to say when he gets there um, hold him. Don't let him go. Don't let him go anywhere. Trap him. Imprison him. Um, and which they did. Uh, she, Tolu, Tohula, um, like mourned for her lost love. Uh, she, and she, to, she grew ill and weak and could no longer make the short journey to the spring. She would go to the spring to meet like where they had, um, where they had used to meet and kiss and do all that kind of fun stuff. Um, when she felt herself dying, she begged her father to bury her in the clear water. Shortly after she died, the sorrowing old warrior rowed her boat, so she dies, out to the middle of Silver Springs and lowered it into the water. This is an important part right here. <laughs> okay. Um, she goes out, she dumps the body, or they dump her body. The spring in the bottom opens up. Remember that happened in the other tale too. Opens up and receives her in, okay? And her body is never found again. He eventually comes back. 
Um, he was been held prisoner the whole time. Um, he had heard that she was dead buried. Navajo goes out to the middle of the creek, rows out to the middle of the creek, and essentially throws himself into the water, commits suicide. Once again, it opens up and receives him in so that their bodies are never found. So both of them, um, the, and it actually says here, the water gurgled and the rock slowly closed upon them. So we have this idea that there is something going on in this area. Like, right? why would you make up these two legends for why there are things going on? And we talked about, uh, which I don't have here, but it's a connected Silver Springs one, where um, they were stealing the, the, they stole, same thing, love going on, and they stole the fire so that they could find each other, so they could like run away from each other. And people are still seeing those ghost lights. So something is going on in Silver Springs, and people are trying to explain why. It has something to do, for some reason, they feel the need to explain why the water has opened up and taken people inside, right? Like, that's the story. Um, so then I discovered <clears throat> um, from a different book. And so this book is the Florida Ghost Stories by Robert R. Johnson. So this is the one I discovered last night. I was looking for um, this book uh, about a ghostly fisherman who tries to pick up chicks uh, that we're looking to trip uh, in about a week. And, um, and so I was looking for a specific book and the library I went to had about 40 um, different <laughs> books on ghosts. It was like the most, it was like the paranormal library and they had like 12 just on Florida. So I was like, I took them all down. And so I was reading this one last night because I was getting uh, bored with reading uh, this one particular guy of which I was reading, going through like three of his different books. So I opened this one up and it talks about um, the story of Morning Dove and Running Fox. So I'm going to tell you the story of Morning Dove and Running Fox really quick. Morning Dove was the most beautiful woman anyone had ever seen. She was like the Helena Troy of Florida Native Americans. And there's so much in this story that's sketchy, but I'm going to go through it. <clears throat> there was, I guess, some form of like Native American Olympics. Now, I've never been able to discover anything that was like this. If you are an expert in Native American folklore, especially of the South, uh, please correct me on this or like give me more information. It is part of the research I'm going to be doing. But all these tribes would come together to compete in um, like this Olympic, all these different Olympic events. And it was at those Olympic events that uh, Morning Dove was seen by Running Fox. And Running Fox was the fastest uh, uh, of everything. He was winning all of the running races. Doesn't say how he, could, how he did in the shot put, but we can assume that uh, he was known far and wide by all these different troops. He took one look at Morning Dove and he absolutely fell in love. Um, to the point that he was like stalking her, so she went to the river, uh, or the springs, I should say, in Silver Springs, and she um, she was like kind of leaning over the water, and he went by and he he pushed her in. That's my trash can. Uh, he pushed her in. Uh, she fell and she got up and she was like yelling at him. She's like all mad at him. She's all pissed. And he's like, "What are you talking about? I own you now. Like I saved your life. Your life is mine." She's like, "What are you talking about?" And on the the tree behind her, behind them was a water moccasin, a deadly water moccasin with a knife through it. And what had happened was he had, because he was stalking her, he had seen her uh, and he had seen the snake and he thought the snake was going to bite her. And so phew, he knocked her into the water to save her and that phew, stuck it in. And as we all know, when you kill a deadly water snake for a chick, she is yours forever. So they, she immediately fell in love with him um, to the point where she was like, why don't you come back? and meet my dad, Big Bear. And if you are going to uh, bring someone home to meet dad, if your dad's Big Bear, you know you're hitting it right. Um, so <clears throat> they go back and meet Big, Big Bear. is completely um, uh, enthralled by, by Running Fox. He's like, he's a good man. He was respectful when he came over here for dinner. He's known as like a great warrior. He's a great runner. I totally will allow you guys to, to marry each other. So this is one of those stories that's supposed to have a happy ending, right? Because unlike all these other Romeo and Juliet scenarios, the father agrees with her and, like, and, and likes him. And so they start to meet under, um, under this uh, pine tree, or I'm sorry, palm tree, which uh, has become kind of like famously known as the, the bridal chamber. 
and there's other these other ghostly stories that are associated with the bridal chamber that I saw in the encyclopedia. Um, however, all is not well because um, Brown Dog, he dog, Brown Dog uh, is really jealous. He had fallen in love with Morning Dove, and he had hoped that he would have her hand. So we got really jealous of Running Fox, also because Running Fox had beat him in a race, and that had really pissed him off because um, he had felt like less of a man, and we all know what that's like. So Brown Dog hid, and when um, Running Fox came by, he took a big stone, crushed him over the head, knocked him unconscious. Uh, spoilers, he's going to kill him. He's going to die. Uh, but before he dies, as he's just kind of lying there with his head wound, um, he's talking to uh, her, and he says, um, if another couple goes to their palm and kisses under their palm, they will fall in love forever, and they will be complete. And then he dies. Ugh, scene. Um, they wrap his body up. They weigh it down. They bring it out to the water. They dump it into Silver Springs. And once again, Silver Springs opens up and takes his body in. Um, Morning Dove is kind of now along the same thing. Um, and he, she's like, I completely uh, uh, can't live without him. And so she decides that she is going to kill herself as well. So she takes the anchor, anchor, which is vines with a rock attached to it, puts it around her throat, throws it off, and commits suicide. And once again, uh, the water opens up for her. For some reason, I'm getting comments, but I cannot read the comments. I'm not quite sure why. Um, so if you're writing comments to me right now, Natalie, if you can kind of maybe even text me what people are saying, if you feel it is an important thing, because I am not um, picking them up right now. So um, so, they, um, so they, they both die. Before she goes, she says to people, um, if you, because she's in the water and she's kind of like leaning over and she pulls up these flowers and she says, if you pull out these flowers and you put one in each shoe, you will fall in love forever. The person you are with, you will be with forever. If you want to get rid of someone, like someone's kind of stalking you or you don't really want to, rather than breaking them up, rather than ghosting them, you can put the flower just in your right shoe. Um, as Natalie points out, I don't know what happens if you put it in your left shoe. But if you put in your right shoe, the person, the person who loves you, who you want to get rid of, will lose interest in you and go away. Um, so that's a really interesting story. And it's so connected to so many of the other things we were talking about. The water opening up, the two people who, who uh, decide that it's better to kill themselves than to go on, um, the idea of, of enchanted love and love forever. But the story goes on. So flash forward, and we don't know when this stuff happened. We know that Running Fox is a seminal. So it's got to be a little later in the history of, um, in the history of Native American lore. Um, but what we don't know is exactly when that story is supposed to take place. We also don't know what tribe she belongs to. So maybe in doing further research, we can get that. However, we do know the next part of the story takes place in 1890. And at that point, there's a gorgeous... Um, there's a gorgeous uh, resort that's built at the mouth of that, that river we talked about, the Oka, Okawalha River, um, which goes through Silver Springs, right? There's a beautiful resort, and one of the popular things to do was to get married, either in the resort or get married and then go to the resort to, um, to have... Let me see if I can change this. I don't know. For some reason, I cannot. I totally cannot read the comments. The only comment I can read is the one that I put in there. Um, so, goes into the uh, you, you go into this uh, resort and get married. It was like the Poconos of its day, I guess. Um, and so, Poconos reference for all you people who are over the age of forty, like me. Um, big boat. <clears throat> it's got one of those big wheels on the front, like a ri big river boat. And there is a couple who are planning to get married when they reach this resort on top, smooching and being all cute and lovey-dovey. And they're going through these bends. And I guess the, the, some of the bends were, were na narrow and kind of they were taking it. And they kind of like, they were used to this, uh, hitting the boats of uh, fishermen who were fishing in this, this, this area. Um, and so they would usually take them really slow, but they were behind schedule. And so they were taking it very fast. They take one of those corners, and boom, they hit one of those boats. 
um, does slight damage to the to the big boat, but what it does is it tosses the girl off the side. Uh, her fiance maybe loves someone else a little bit more. He doesn't jump into the water afterwards. Instead, the person who uh, tells the story is the person who jumps into the water. They jump in the water to save her. Um, they, I believe, she's wearing a maroon, like a maroon dress with this uh, this white scarf. He jumps in the water. He's following the, the 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 color of the dress and the scarf. And he grabs the scarf and he's pulling the scarf, and she goes underneath those the, the big wheel. And he loses her. And he, like he pulls the scarf up, he goes back up for breath himself. And they spend the next few hours like searching all around this river for her body, and they cannot find the body. But the guy says, uh, almost like it is an afterthought, that he thought he saw people, two people swimming away, like one person swimming away with. Um, Natalie's sending me comments. Thank you. Um, I think Tupac is also hiding in Silver Springs, but I'm going to go back to... <laughs> um, so uh, they, they search, they can't find her. So they've got this scarf, and the, the fiancé is holding the scarf and crying into the scarf and all that stuff like that. So they 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 decide they, they can't search anymore. They go down the river. They end up in Silver Springs, which is the town of Silver Springs down. They go to the police station. They decide to report the, the death. Um, and the, so the guy goes as a witness, as along with the fiancé and the captain of the boat. And the guy's like, what are you talking about? What you just described? That woman's in my interview room right now. And so they go down to the interview interview room, and there she is, and she's completely dry. She's still wearing the maroon dress, and she's just kind of got this dazed look in her eye. And of course, the two lovers like Ooh, they run across the room, and they oh they kiss and they love. Oh, da, 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 da. And so they ask her her story, like what the hell happened? So she says, as she was going into the uh, underneath, she um, blacked out. And when she woke up, she was completely naked, except for a blanket, which was not hers, wrapped around her. And her clothes were on the cloak, like a, like a line, uh, drying. And she was in the presence of this uh, Native American man who was uh, pretty much naked himself. And though it's weird, though, she reports that she felt completely at ease. Like she wasn't like stressed out that she was like naked, almost, like in front of this man or that he had seen her naked. She said she felt very comfortable. And he's like, all right, well, I'm going to join you or, 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 you know, I saved you underneath the water. I'm going to take you back into town. The easiest way for us to get to, back to town is by foot. So let's go walk. Um, so she puts her clothes back on. They're walking. They're talking a little bit, but not too much. And as they get to this uh, palm tree, which she said she it stood out to her, this palm tree, she said, he says, I can't go any further. And she's like, well, how come? And he's like, I, this is where my journey ends. And she hears something down the road, and so she looks, and she looks back. The guy is completely gone. And she can hear kind of on the, the air, if you will, or like hear this disembodied voice that says, thank you, I've done a good deed, so now I can find peace. And so she's telling this story, uh, and she, she walks the rest of the way into town. So she's telling this story to uh, the police and her and her, her fiancé and all these things, and they're like, this is completely incredible, you know, how'd this happen, da, da, da. You know, you can describe the man, she describes him, he's like, well, did he say his name at any point? And she says, brown dog. So you probably saw the ending coming. It's not completely unpredictable. It's got a little hint of a Haunted Hitchhiker to it. It's got a little hint of other lore that we've talked about or that I've talked about or that you've, you've experienced sometime in your life. Um, but it seems to be this ending of this. Um, the other legend talks about how no one knows what happened to Brown Dog. No one, uh, he immediately disappeared. So they don't know whether uh, the spirits took him for some reason or whether he went back uh, or he ran up north to a different tribe or whether one of the tribes decided to take revenge. All they know is that he disappears and he's not seen again. So there's no like um, Brown Dog uh, um, legends that kind of are in this time period. It's all of a sudden, all these years later, in 1890, he shows up uh, in this legend, this this odd legend. Um, crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, not quite, and it's it's one of those things where you don't something's got to be up, right? 
there is something going on in Silver Springs because people are feeling the need to create these stories. Now, you could say it's just because they're trying to create a mystique. At one time, they say Silver Springs was a famous spring, like we're hearing of all these different places in Florida that pop up that are their own little fountains of youth. Maybe these stories arise because you're trying to get some kind of popularity for your particular place. It doesn't seem like that though. Um, these are not necessarily well-known ones. These have been buried during the time that they were popular and are now coming out as kind of like ghost people are trying to uh, find more information about it. But something's got to be up for them to be creating and for them to have created these stories about what's going on. Now, in that episode which I've posted, we talk about the, the, the potential scientific explanation for ghost lights and things like that. Um, but there definitely is something odd that's going on, right? Uh, something unexplained. Now, you can say swamp gas. Um, you can say it's, it's interesting because one of the um, one of the articles uh, the person talks about how far away from actual swamp some parts of Silver Spring are. Fine, you have like vegetation that's you know degrading or whatever and, and releasing something. <clears throat> but it's one of those those things where. At what point do you have to look at the things that are going on and say, well, these are real paranormal occurrences. Um, and these stories might not be true because there's so many of them, but what's going on there is. So we are definitely planning a trip to Silver Springs um, this summer as part of Road Trip 2018. Um, I really can't see the comments. I'm going to try one more time to do something to uh, to see the comments. Not sure why I'm not, and I'm nervous to play with anything. Um, that would once again be me hitting the wrong button. Um, but if anyone has a story like this, like I said, we're collecting them. We're not just collecting them from Florida. We're not just collecting them about Native Americans. Uh, and we're not pinning it into just Romeo and Juliet type stories. We're looking for anything, hashtag haunted love, uh, that has to do with, I'm going to put haunt, haunted love because Colvin loves the idea of haunted love or just maybe the hashtag of it. Um, so for example, I just typed that in. I don't know where it is. Um, uh, we're looking for your stories. So if you've got those stories from your area uh, or you've heard of them, they don't have to be Native American. They don't have to be of the past. Uh, Dave, I see, is in here. I don't know if he's still in here. I found some good Indiana ones um, that have to do with uh, love and ghosts in Indiana today. Um, so if you've got them, please send them to us because we are trying to get as many as we possibly can. Um, I'm thinking about opening it up to um, love between a mother and her children or a father and her children because I'm here reading some really good stories about that. Um, that Silver Springs one on the cliff, if you looked at the picture uh, that I posted recently from one of my students, I commissioned her to write that. I told her a little bit of the story. That's how she envisioned it looking. Um, we're, I'm looking to tap any of those kinds of things. So you can get in touch with Natalie and I. You can post it here on Facebook. I'm actually, now that I've got at least one picture that I'm going to be using, I'm going to be creating a splash page on the WordPress for it as well. So you can go to trippingonlegends.wordpress.com um, or you can contact us here. I mean, you can do it on Twitter if you'd like. I'm at Spooky Balzano and she is at Nene, my friend. Um, but it, you really can't post stuff there, although you can post links. Um, so if you want to get those, that information to us, if you've got a story, if you know someone who has a story, if it's a friend of a friend, if it's a hitchhiker legend that involves love, if it's having to do with you know high suicide, it has to do with just people who, who found each other after death, anything like that, get it to us. Haunted love is in full effect. Uh, I am Christopher Balzano. Natalie is in the, uh, is in the chat room with you guys. I'm going to not have her say her part or type her part because I can't even read the comments, so I'll just do it myself. We are tripping on legends, and here's hoping that all your trips are legendary. Good night, and thanks for viewing.